It just is means head jizz, I'm not... but, 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 Is the jizz no. a punishment to the unbelievers? No. <laughs> Can I explain to you the historical context of the Jizya? Because you're not letting me talk, right? So is the Jizya a punishment? Let's, let's, let's end on the no. Jizya. Is the Jizya a punishment? Okay. Then what does no, the word Jizya mean in Arabic? Explain okay, to me. What does the word Jizya mean in right, Arabic? Can I, can I explain to you how the Jizya worked? In his, is the, it a punishment context? or not? Can I explain to you how the Jizya worked is in the Is it a punishment context? or not? Is it a punishment? Look, it is a tax. It is a tax. Is it a it punishment? Is a tax. I'm not sure. Is Let's it a punishment see. to the Let unbelievers? I understand it's a tax. Is it a punishment to the unbelievers? Right. Um, it just is means head the tax. Not... Ba, 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 is the jizzy no. a punishment to the unbelievers? No. <laughs> Can I explain to you the historical context of the jizzy? Because you're not letting me talk. Right? So oftentimes, brother, historically, you're just my time right? at this the, point. You're just, you're, brother, you're just being a donkey. Under Muslim rule, right? Brother, you're a donkey at this jizya? point. Is, the jizya is oh literally a punishment to the unbelievers. Why you're, don't they call like, the jizya zakat? Me off, dude. Why don't they call the jizya zakat? Because it's for different things. The zakat because was it's more not. for the Muslims. The jizya oftentimes, is a the jizya would be repaid Kill back to the non-Muslims. Until they give the jizya. It says it fight is the a punishment, right? Nobody. Okay, what, what happens what, if you I don't? don't what wait, what happens if you don't pay a tax? Agrees with me, brother. Look, Most look, of okay. your scholars agree with me, brother. Are you You're better like, than your scholars? Look, are you better this than is even like, This is like this is. Look, can I explain to you the historical context of the? I, I, I don't care about the speak. historical context. Is but it a you punishment don't care or not? About how it was actually implemented. Is it a punishment or not? No, from from is the historical implementation. Okay, no, just, it went back to the people of the book. It went back to pay for their else, welfare, for their social for services. For you and oftentimes, when the Muslims couldn't even defend the people of the book, they would give the jizya back to them. Brother, you're just wasting my time at this point. You're just wasting my time. Look, I'm literally explaining to you the historical application. You're just wasting my time at this point. All right. So we have one minute left. I'm okay. gonna kick you off the stream, okay? And if if you I'm, wanna continue this conversation, we can continue it another time. But sure. But we have one minute left, and I'm gonna go, all okay? Right. All right. <sighs> okay. All right, guys. So you see, this is, uh, I mean, this is essentially <laughs> the issue I have with every Muslim I have a conversation with is they feel the need to defend, not Islam, right? Let's just take Islam. They feel the need to defend their prophet at any cost, at any cost. Whether it comes to defending the, the marriage to Aisha, right? And again, a lot, that's why so many Muslims deny it. Because, right, when we read it today, right, when we read Sahih al-Bukhari today, where it talks about him marrying Aisha at six, then consummated the marriage when she was nine. It's wild, right? Anybody that's a non-Muslim, even even right to Muslims, it's like uh, it's an uncomfortable topic. It's an uncomfortable topic, and it is a low-hanging fruit, right? And a lot of Muslims just get frustrated when you bring that up to them. They get very frustrated. But this is what happens: is when you follow a perverted seventh-century war lord, bloodthirsty prophet, is you feel the need to defend everything he says. And this is the this is again I've talked about this before, guys. This is the miracle of reinterpretation. This is the miracle of reinterpretation in Islam. So for centuries after Muhammad, right? For centuries after Muhammad, uh, all the tafsirs, right? Guys like Ibn Kathir and all the other guys, right? Th this th this is how they right view these certain verses, right? This the jizya is a punishment for the unbelievers. Fight the unbelievers until they give the jizya, right? This is how they viewed, right, for years. But now modern day scholars come about and suddenly the miracle of reinterpretation occurs, right? Oh, well, actually, you know what? Man, even Kathir might have been wrong there, right? Oh, Sahih al-Bukhari, right, on, on his point when it comes to Aisha, right, being sick. Oh, he's probably wrong, right? There's there's holes in this chain of narration, right? We don't We don't know if it's true or not. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? You're following a 7th century disgusting, perverted prophet who, by the way, by the way, was using, right, Allah, was using Allah, right, for his own needs. He was using it, right, this is supposed to be the, the best thing, right, for humanity, right? These revelations are supposed to be what's best for humanity. 
They're supposed to be what's best for humanity. But what this, but what Muhammad is doing, right? Like we read about, for example, when people were coming over to the prophet's house uninvited, right? And he didn't like it and he was rude. So he happens to have a revelation, right? A self-serving revelation. It's not the best for humanity. It's a self-serving revelation that says, hey, stop coming over to the prophet's house uninvited. Also, when you talk to his wives, talk through a partition or a curtain because I'm very jealous. Also, don't marry my wives after I die because I'm kind of old now. I might die. My wife, some of my wives are very young. They're in their 20s maybe. I don't, I don't know how old they were. Don't marry them afterwards. This is a holy prophet, right? That is getting revelations from a God, from Allah, the God. Or La, the Arabic, uh, right, God that they worship before, Allah. And we have modern day Muslims in the 21st century defending everything, this disgusting warlord of a, he's, not, he's no prophet to me, right? Prophet with a small P. Because they feel the need to defend it. They feel the need to prove that, oh, and, and look, the kind of Islam that, that this, this guy was kind of portraying to me, I can be on board with that kind of Islam, right? I can be on board for it, right? Uh, we, we, we don't trust Al Bukhari when she was six. Okay. Uh, it's actually not talking about killing. I don't believe in killing apostates or, 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 or you know, non-believers. Right? People can be on board with that kind of Islam. But that's not what Islam is. That's not true Islam. That's not true Islam at all. At its core, the ideology is disgusting. The ideology is perverted. The ideology is evil. And it's satanic. And while under the influence of this black magic, which, which, by the way, Muhammad was possessed by devil, by the devil his entire life. That's why he was revealing the, that's why he was having these wild revelations, right? From an angel. What kind of angel squeezes you and chokes you? That's what this angel was doing. He was squeezing him and choking him saying, do you know how to read? And he says, no, read. I can't read, read. I mean, this is wild. This is insane. The whole book is nonsense. Islam is nonsense. I mean, it's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. Let's be real. If you like the content, like, share, comment, subscribe for more and follow my social medias in the description below. I'll see you guys next time and may the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you.